la culpa. Amor de compra y venta, amor del pasado. Ven, 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 better known as Seville Cathedral, is a Roman Catholic cathedral in Seville. It was registered in 1987 by UNESCO as a World Heritage Site, along with the adjoining Alcazar Palace Complex and the General Archive of the Indies. Work on the Christian Cathedral, the largest in Europe, began in 1401 and took just over a century to complete. As well as enjoying the Gothic immensity, and the works of art in its chapels and treasury. Visitors can climb La Giralda, which is the Moorish bell tower, for superb views over the city. Here we are early in the morning, ready to join the queue to visit the Royal Alcazar. The Alcazar is a royal palace in Seville, built for the Christian king Peter of Castile. It was built by Christians on the site of a Muslim residential fortress, destroyed after the Christian conquest of Seville. The palace, a preeminent example of Mudejar architecture in the Iberian Peninsula, is renowned as one of the most beautiful. The upper levels of the Alcazar are still used by the royal family as their official residence in Seville. The gardens are laid out with terraces, fountains and pavilions. These gardens provide a delightful refuge from the heat and bustle of Seville. Seville's famous bullring is arguably the finest in the whole of Spain. 
even if you dislike the idea of bullfighting, this arcade arena, dating from 1761 to 1881, is an aesthetic marvel and well worth a visit. This is the Guadalquivir River and it's the fifth longest river in the Iberian Peninsula and the second longest river with its entire length in Spain. I think we'll come back in a few days and do a cruise on the river. My favourite shop. This is the Museum of Fine Arts in Seville and it houses a collection of mainly Spanish visual arts from the medieval period to the early 20th century and it includes a choice selection of works by artists from the so-called golden age of civilian painting during the 17th century such as Murillo. The building itself was built in 1594, but the museum was founded in 1839 after the shuttering of religious monasteries and convents. This was originally the Barefoot Convent of Mercy and it has been restored to create one of the finest art museums in Spain. The Plaza de España in Maria Luisa Park was built in 1928 for the Spanish American Exposition of 29. In the centre is the Vincent Traver Fountain. He was one of the architects responsible for designing the plaza. By the walls of the plaza, are many tiled alcoves, each representing a different province of Spain. Here we are, just outside the heart of Cordoba, the old Jewish quarter. This is the mosque and cathedral. This is the Amphitheatre Cathedral, we're just waiting for, and this is the Belter. Cordoba's great mosque, dating back to the 12th century, embodies the power of Islam on the Iberian Peninsula. Abdul al Rahman I built the original mosque between 785 and 787. The building evolved over the centuries, blending the many architectural forms. In Cordoba. In the 16th century, a cathedral is built in the heart of the reconcentrated mosque, part of which was destroyed to accommodate the cathedral.
This bell tower, 93 metres high, is built on the site of the original minaret. Saint Raphael, the city's patron saint, is honoured by this 18th century statue. The Romans were the first to build a bridge over the Rio Guadalquivir. It was rebuilt many times, but the bridge still rests on its original Roman foundations, hence the name Puente Romano. The Palace of the Christian Monarchs. Its palace fortress was built in 1328 on the orders of Alfonso XI. Ferdinand II and Isabel stayed here when they visited Cordoba during their campaign to conquer Granada from the Moors. Later it was used by the Inquisition and then as a prison. A well-deserved break after an exhausting day. Cheers. The Alhambra, a world heritage site, is a palace and fortress complex in Granada. It was originally constructed as a small fortress in 889 AD on the remains of a Roman fortification and then largely ignored until its ruins were renovated and rebuilt in the mid-13th century by the Nastrid dynasty. It's all so magnificent. This patio was completed in 1365 and this was where the Sultan listened to the petitions of his subjects. The ceiling of the scrumptious throne room, built between 1334 and 1354, represents the seven heavens of the Muslim cosmos. This pool, set among myrtle hedges and graceful arcade on the Patio de la Arenas, or the Court of the Myrtles, reflects light into the surrounding halls.
Apparently, the pattern on the stalactited ceiling was inspired by Pythagoras' theorem. And this beautiful ceiling in the Great Banqueting Hall was painted on leather from the 14th century and it depicts tales of hunting and chivalry. This structure was commanded by Charles V, Holy Roman Emperor, in 1526, who wished to establish his residence close to the Alhambra palaces. The building, however, has never been home to a monarch and stood roofless until 1957. You can turn around if you like. is the Torre del Oro, where we're going to board our boat for our 35 minute cruise along Seville's Guadalquivir River. With a history of dating back to the ancient Phoenicians and Greeks, this waterway was responsible for the founding and prosperity of Seville. Funds were provided by central government to build the new infrastructure needed to support Expo 92. Five bridges, all of the most innovative modern design, were built over the Guadalquivir River. This is the Puente del Barqueta, a unique suspension bridge supported by a unique overhead beam spanning 168 metres. This beautiful building is the old train station, which is currently unused. This is the Cistercian Monastery of St. Clement, and it was built from the 16th to the 17th century. Seville's famous bullring is arguably the finest in the whole of Spain. The bullring accommodates as many as 12,500 spectators. Triana, named after the Emperor Trajan, has traditionally been a working class district. 
famous for bullfights and flamenco artists that came from its predominantly gypsy community. With cobbled streets and shops selling ceramic, it still has an authentic lived-in feel. There's so many out on the Guadalquivir this morning. There appears to be a supping regatta going on. We'll check that out later. These are the various pavilions that were built for Expo 92, which placed Andalusia at the centre of the world stage. The theme of Expo 92 was the Age of Discovery, since it celebrated the 500th anniversary of Columbus's first voyage in 1492 and the beginning of Seville's era of great wealth. However, while it was deemed a huge success, the event cost 9.3 billion and left the city with a debt for decades. Uh, the Harper Bridge. This has a single upward arm supporting its weight. Again, this was built for Expo 92. This is Shapina Bridge, which is distinguished by a geometrical designed canopy running along the top. Well, that was a wonderful trip. And now to check out the supper competition. 